What up, everybody? I'm Dave Miranda, and this is episode 17 of Just Give Me Five. Hope you guys have been doing well, having a great week. Starting to heat up here in Arizona, so we're going to be making that transition indoors soon, so be on the lookout for the new locations. All right. But this episode is sponsored by Support District Radio Network. Support District Radio Network is a media outlet where communication and connection is at the forefront. They specialize in promoting phenomenal artists from every background and events, and uh, you know, check them out at supportdistrictradio.com or download the free app today. Support District Radio Network, where it's more than radio. Shout out to Amanda Wynn. All right. If you guys caught episode 16, though, we had the one and only DJ Villain on. And let me tell you, when he started talking about those after nine events at Coach and Willie's and all those times, that took me back to the early 2000s because I specifically remember partying at these events. And let me tell you, man, some of the greatest times of my life. You know, him and his crew really knew how to get down. And uh, they did so much for the scene, especially the street racing scene. You know, they were like our fast and furious. So. Salute to him and all of them. Rest in peace to Ray Martinez. Salute to my brother, DJ Villain. And make sure you guys watch episode 16. All right. But today's guest is like the Miss Jones of Arizona radio. You know, if now if you're not familiar with who Miss Jones is, she's a legendary radio host from Hot 97 in New York, you know, in the early, early 90s, you know, 2000s, who was the first black woman to have her own morning show. So she made history. Well... Lisa D has a similar story. She's the first female DJ slash radio personality to have her own show in Arizona. And she's paved the way for numerous radio personalities and DJs, females at that, um, in the Valley. And uh, she's uh, been around the world, you know, traveled, you know, uh, got numerous accolades, hung with the best of them. She's got a hell of a story. And we're here for all of it. So ladies and gentlemen, Without further ado, I present to you, Lisa D. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Lisa D, and all I'm saying is just give me five. Oh, <laughs> that's an interesting story. Um, well, I started as a club DJ first, so uh, 90, 1996 is actually when I started club DJing. We'll kind of probably get into that a little bit later. However, as far as radio was concerned, um, you know, I was doing some gigs and um, came across the station, and they were playing old school, and I'm like, oh my God, this station is amazing, and I wanted to promote for them. So I reached out to the station, uh, called the front desk, and I said, can you please tell me who the program director is? And she said, Alexander Marie, and I'm like, why do I know that name? Who? Who is that? I know I, I know I know that name. Can I speak to him? No, um, but I can leave a message. And she says, you know, you could go ahead and call the request line. Called the request line and spoke to him. He's like, hey, Lisa D, what's up? And I'm like, this guy knows who I am. <laughs> he said, why don't you just come on down? Let's just chit chat. And I said, okay, well, you know, I just, I really want to promote the station. Can I get some shirts when I do some gigs? Because I was playing a lot of old school, playing a lot of house and stuff um, out in the clubs. And I just really wanted to promote the station. He's like, well, have you been on the radio before? And I was like, no, but I would love to get on the air. And uh, he's like, well, <laughs> why don't we just bring you on as promotions? And I was like, really? He basically brought me on as promotions, uh, drove the van around, did some on location stuff. At the time, I was also, I had a day job, have to have that day job. Um, I was working at the Great Indoors as a project manager and I was making really good money. And um, <laughs> well, I was putting so much work into the radio station. Um, at that time, they had just flipped their sister station, which is 101.1. Now it's the beat, but back in the day, it was um, energy radio. Um, so I was doing double duty with both stations, just promoting with the van, we're out at the clubs, we're on scene with the, the talent. So I talked to my boss at The Great Indoors and I just said, I'm giving you my notice. <laughs> He's like, okay, did you get something better? And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be working in radio. 
And he's like, well, okay, but radio doesn't pay much. It really didn't, honestly. I was making upwards about 20 bucks an hour at the Great Indoors. I was only making $7, $7.50 at the radio station, but I was like, for some reason, it's just that passion was there. And so just promoted the station. Alex had me go out. He was doing afternoons at that time. And uh, he said, hey, Lisa, why don't you do some call-ins? And I was like, wait, what? Can I write something down and what, what I'm going to say? And he's like, no, 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 no. Just, just talk, just I, like you're talking to me. And I'm like, okay. So I'd be on location. Hey, it's Lisa D. I'm out here in the mega van, <laughs> you know, for Mega 104.3. And I've got some T-shirts and concert tickets. You know, I'm still like trying to wing it. And he's like, that was great. So I kept going out in the van and uh, then the general manager called me in and he's like, hey, we need to talk. And I'm like, okay, this is after about a month and a half. Um, and I'm literally putting like 50 hours of work for promotions and such. And uh, they said, hey, um, we keep getting a lot of calls that people are like, you know, when's Lisa D gonna be on the air? I wasn't really on the air at that time, but just because I was doing those call-ins, then they ended up promoting me to co-host of the morning show with the Manic Hispanic. <laughs> so I went, went from promotions to morning show co-host and producer, and the rest is pretty much history. <laughs> so uh, it was an amazing time. From that point on, our sister station, uh, KNRJ, um, they needed a, somebody to do nights, so I was the first female to do nights on that station. So I was doing mornings on Mega 104.3, nighttime on KNRJ, doing the club thing, and just so much fun. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, I started in 1996. I have to give a big thanks to my best friend at the time, Judy Booty. That's what we called her. <laughs> um, let me tell you how I started first, if that's okay, and then kind of go into that. Because again, back in 1996, as you know, present day, Female DJs are pretty much a dime a dozen. Back in the day, there were a lot of females, but not um, not so much in the limelight as much, unless it was the underground scene. Um, there really weren't really any commercial female DJs. When I started, I started in the sports bar, uh, Butch O'Leary's back in Mesa, if anybody remembers that. And uh, Judy got me in there because I was doing that old school thing, just putting like cassette tapes back then and uh, just putting music together. And she's like, man, you're amazing. Um, and they were looking for a DJ. And she says, well, you should come and talk to the owner. And I was like, I don't know anything about DJing. And uh, she's like, well, just come in. She goes, you can, you can, you're a good salesperson. You can uh, <laughs> just talk your way. And so uh, went in, talked to the owner. He's like, well, have you done anything? And I was like, oh yeah, I did a couple house parties, did a couple store openings. Did not. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's like, all right, well, I want to do kind of like a Wednesday night, kind of an old school thing, disco. And I was like, yes. So uh, anyways, got my start there. And from that point ended up uh, kind of blowing up. Um, was at Butch O'Leary's. I don't even think it was a full year, but from when I started on Wednesdays, they ended up moving me to Friday and Saturday just because Wednesdays ended up getting busier, which was great. Just because when it comes to music, I mean, especially if you've got that passion for music, which I did, especially old school, um, it was different because I was a female. So I was bringing in the crowd, talking on the mic. And it was funny because when people would come in, to the dance floor, you had to step up on this thing. And then, you know, if you want to make a request, they're looking for the DJ. I'm standing right there and I'm like, can I help you? They're like, where's the DJ? And I'm like, I am the DJ. Cause I had this long hair, <laughs> you know, I mentioned I used to be a hair model. And they're like, you're not the DJ. And I'm like, yes, I'm the DJ. I said, hold it right there. And I started talking and I'm like, hey guys, don't forget to take advantage of the $3 beers, you know, or whatever. And they were like, it was just something different at that time, again, back in 96. Ended up doing weekends, the hype got around town, so people started to visit. Some other DJs were introducing themselves. Got my first agent, Alex Luca, and started doing some, some different clubs um, out and about around town. It wasn't easy. I, I'm thankful for Alex just because he did get me into the clubs. However, um, I had to do a lot of clubs for free just because I had to get my name out there, which was fine. I started to spin vinyl. Um, wasn't great at it, <laughs> but I still had that programming and so that, you know, that was the most important and I could always just perfect that. Never had turntables, never had any equipment, uh, barely even had a couple of crates of records, but still had enough to where I could go do a guest spot for an hour or two hours, go to the club. And um, even though Alex would set up, you know, club gigs and hey, just go, just do a quick guest spot and then just leave, you know, just cause we wanna just get that exposure. There were times where even if he had booked me at some clubs, 
um, there was a lot of resistance because one, I was a female. Um, two, nobody had heard about me. So there were times where like Club Tribeca, I went to Club Tribeca on a Friday night. Jamie J was the DJ, rest in peace. Um, and uh, he was planning on giving me the spot, but then there was another guy there. He's like, well, we don't know her. This is a Friday night, it's a hot spot. We don't wanna just have some, somebody who nobody knows play. Yeah, so I'm waiting there and he says, hey, Lise, I'm sorry, you know, we're gonna have to try this another night, but this is our prime night, we can't do it. Another DJ that was there, um, he does Saturdays. He pulled me aside, he's like, hey, I'm Rob Wagner. <laughs> so, hey, Rob. And he said, um, why don't you come back next week? I'll let you do my Saturday. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, come in. He goes, we'll do a guest spot. He goes, as a matter of fact, next Friday, come see me at 411. And I was like, in Tempe? And he's like, yeah. I know, and, I, and he's like, yeah, just come and do a guest spot. He goes, I'd love to have you. And I was like, wow, thanks. Went and did 411, did um, Club Tribeca on that Saturday, and did a couple of club gigs here and there. Again, <laughs> nobody took me seriously because back then I had all this long hair, um, you know, carrying a little flight case of records, and nobody knew who I was, but the name was getting out there. I started doing after hours at Benny's nightclub. Hi, Benny. <laughs> I know. Shout outs. No, not that's too soon. Um, <laughs> my bad. I'm sorry. It's your show, not mine. <laughs> Take two. No, <laughs> just kidding. So anyways, um, it was just, you know, just building up to that. But again, there was a lot of resistance. Sometimes Alex wouldn't be there if I did a club gig. Literally, and I know this doesn't happen today, I really don't. It probably does, but honestly, I think it just happened more, more so back then. I would do a club gig, go in the back and talk to the club owner and say, hey, I did my set, can I get paid? One time, <laughs> I'm not gonna say who it was, there was a club in Scottsdale, same, very same thing happened. I went in, did my set, they were pleased. Actually, they moved me also to the front and wanted me to do a set there. And I was like, yeah, no problem, I'll just throw down. And did, and uh, went back to click my uh, payment and they gave me a cup full of coins. And I said, what's this? They said, that's your payment. Mm, okay, do I need to call Alex? They're like, no, 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 <laughs> never mind. You know, I guess Alex had that great name and so of course he was my manager at the time. But a lot of resistance. I mean, definitely a lot of resistance. I didn't let it get to me. I just had to push through and just, you know, this is what I wanna do, this is what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna go as far as I can, so. Um, I mean, it was great, don't get me wrong. I had so many great times, especially starting out back in the 90s. I mean, honestly, uh, and I know some of your past guests who have been in the club industry can certainly attest to that, but the, the late 90s, early 2000s, such, such a great, great times um, DJing in the clubs for sure. So, but it wasn't easy, I can tell you. <laughs>so oh, many <laughs> lots of cool stuff where can I start um, getting signed by agents um, I had a, my second agent um, I have to mention that there was a time where I actually got out of the club so this is even before radio and um, I got out of the club scene for about a year and a half uh, due to a bad relationship we won't get into that but um, and got back into it and I literally had to do what I could to get back into the game of course, like I said, I'm just so motivated. It's like, okay, I gotta, you know, hey, I'm Lisa D. I used to DJ here, here, and here. I'm just trying to get my name out there. Can I get on your website? Um, and apparently that paid off. So I ended up getting a second agent. My contract with Alex had um, was up at the time. I ended up acquiring um, an agent from New York, Serena Callow. So from that point, she got me doing a lot of other club gigs. So I was traveling to Miami and New York, LA. I was doing a bunch of stuff there. Um, Gosh, she had me do a couple of gigs for like the homeless in New York, which was really cool because I would just fly out there for the gig and fly back that night or the day after. Um, but in radio, um, I uh, was one of the first to be nominated and actually I was awarded um, Music Director of the Year uh, in 2005 for Sin, the SIN Network, Street Information Network, which was really cool. Thank you guys so much for that. That was amazing. Honestly, I didn't even know about that award until after the fact, until they mailed it to me. Um, which was a huge shock, and uh, the record labels had um, um, 
you know, had nominated me, which I thought was a blessing. I mean, I've worked with so many of them and, and to just get some kind you know, an award like that, that was amazing. Through my work at Energy, there were times where I helped a lot of uh, records hit number one. Actually, I was one of the contributing factors, I guess you could say, I don't want to take full credit, but I was a contributing factor and a contributor as far as the, the dance music category for Billboard. So that was starting to blow up. I mean, the timing was off. I mean, if Energy was here now, I honestly think it would have gotten a lot better. The dance um, category would be a lot better. The music was so much better back then, but <laughs> again, that's kind of another story. But I had nominations for best midday personality because I ended up getting moved to middays from morning show, um, morning shows at, uh, for the morning show rather, at um, Mega. I ended up getting my own morning show on Energy. So I was the first female to have a morning show and host a morning show. It didn't last um, because, again, Energy was a smaller station. It wasn't, you know, didn't have a lot of listenership. Um, Nikki Nice was my, uh, <laughs> she was my assistant, and uh, we had a great time. But again, it was short-lived. Um, but did get a, a quick nomination for a morning show. Um, didn't get an award for that, but that was fine. Again, I wasn't on there that long, but um, had quite a few nominations. Um, like I said, recognized by Billboard and just doing a lot of stuff for the community. So, I mean, like I said, there's so much to name. I don't want to, you know, really put too much out there or too, you know, it's not really bragging. I'm very just happy and blessed of all the awards and achievements that I was able to do. And I mean, just through that career, it seemed like a whirlwind of stuff just in a short amount of time, but either way, it was just such a blessing. The industry today is so much different than it was back then. Um, I mean, but I would say the same thing then as I would say now. For females or males, it really doesn't make a difference. But I, I think women have it a lot easier now, and there's so much more women now that are driven. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, um, especially female DJs are a dime a dozen. Not necessarily the personalities, but DJs in the clubs. Um, <laughs> I do have to point out, though, I'm sure if you put some records, some actual vinyl in front of those DJs, they probably wouldn't know what to do with it. But I'm not not talking <laughs> negatively. I'm just saying that yeah, usually no. would weed out. But male or female, whatever you choose to do, especially if it's in this industry, understand the industry. Don't just do it just because you're like, oh, my God, everybody's doing it. So I want to do it. Do it because you're passionate. Um, and don't let anybody steer you wrong. Don't let anybody tell you there's something that you can't do. I mean, obviously, at that time when I started, there was a lot of resistance because, you know, female DJs were not necessarily unheard of, but just in a commercial st state where I was, I mean, I was playing, I was playing some underground music, but I was also doing the commercial thing. I mean, I'm one of the first female, I think I'm the only female DJ who spins, who spins classic hits. I mean, when I was on Cool FM, I mean, <laughs> playing, you know, uh, I can't even think of some, you know, Fleetwood Mac, <laughs> and I'm, right. you know, mixing and stuff, um, all this classic hits music. But for anyone who truly wants to maybe get into radio, just study the, you know, study um, the station, the station that you're truly, in, you know, interested in. Don't be one of those who, I'll take what I can get. If you're really driven to do a pop station, then focus on pop music, you know, understand the knowledge, maybe, um, pay more attention to those trends because that's what they're talking about on that station. If it's country music, focus on country music, you know, don't have a, just a pop music background and like, oh my God, I can get this job at the country station just because I can get on the air. It's not going to work uh, to your advantage. It's really going to counteract or it's going to kind of backfire if that makes sense. So study your craft. Um, don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it, but just understand that this industry itself, whether it's a club, club job, a, a DJ job, or in radio, rejection is huge. It's so competitive, but don't let that stop you from doing what you truly are passionate about, something that you truly want to do. Figure out ways around it. Don't follow the norm. Be a leader and stand out from the rest. So then that way people will notice and be like, oh my God, we got to get her on the radio or we really want to get that person in the club. She's so different. So that would be my advice. The warm feels. <laughs> um, I, I, it feels great. I mean, it's it's really an honor and a blessing. Um, I'm so thankful for each and every one of you who have supported me through the years, even supporting me when I'm not on the radio or not in the clubs. You know that it's still that support still resonates even through the present day. And um, I'm dealing with some sickness right now, which I 
don't know what's going on with that, but long story short, I'm thankful that you guys have stuck with me. Um, and it truly means a lot. I mean, I think it's not even a think. I know that because of that love and support, that's what has kept me driven through the years because, you know, you're going to have that balance of positive and negative people. I mean, if you don't have haters, then you're probably doing something wrong, to be honest. Um, it took me time to learn that. However, just knowing that <laughs> there's so much love and I wish there was more love in the world, to be honest. Um, I mean, that's certainly what we could use right now, but I'm thankful that it's directed in, uh, towards me. And so to that, I say Mwah! love and blessings to you. I love you all. Shout out. <laughs> I got a list. <laughs> no, I don't actually. That's empty. <laughs> I'm going to try to see if I can remember everybody. There's so many people. I had to do that, though. <laughs> um, gosh, let's start from the top. God, um, thank you, God. Thank you, universe, for all the many blessings you've provided me. Mom and my sister, Sheree, for all the years through thick and thin, especially through the career. I mean, in life in general. To you, Dave, of course, and Jimmy, who I just met, and but again, I feel like I know you already from all the shows I've watched. Um, you two are amazing, and I appreciate this opportunity. Um, Rob Wagner, I have to say thank you, a big thank you from the beginning. He definitely was instrumental in um, just helping me get that exposure, you know, when I started my career. Kevin Brown, I want to thank. Um, J.U. Ice. Hi, guys. Um, thank you so much for giving me a chance to prove that I do have what it takes in, in the club. Um, Marcus McBride, uh, he actually <laughs> gave me my first flight case. Thanks, Marcus. Um, Alex Santa Maria, Cedric Sabalos, Bruce Kelly. Ugh, story about Bruce Kelly, but I mean, he's like a big brother to me, and I had the opportunity of doing mornings with him, so I'm thankful for him. Benny RC, of course. Thank you, Benny. Um, Jay Allen, uh, MCB. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Solomon, Pete Salas, Senbad. I mean, definite pioneers from the industry, especially in house music. So thank you, guys. Um, Oh gosh, there's so many people. Uh, Robbie Rob. <laughs> um, the fans, um, my friends, definitely the fans, of course, I have to thank, I you know I thank you guys so much, um, again, for your support through the years, on and off the air, as well as inside and outside of the club, truly means a lot. And I do want to recognize, um, oh, DJ Perry, I forgot to say, sorry. <laughs> and if I didn't mention you, it didn't mean I wasn't thinking about you. It's just, there's so much and I'm just, Excited to be here, but um, shout outs to you, of course, too. But I definitely want to throw some love to those who have passed on that we've lost in this industry. So Jamie J, rest in peace. John Stetler, um, DJ Earth and DJ Steel and my, my agent, Serena Callow. Thank you guys. Love you and we miss you. And thank you guys so much. <laughs> and there you have it. Much love and respect to Lisa D. You know, she has paved the way for so many. And, uh, you know, it was just truly an honor to have her on the show today. And also be on the lookout for her autobiography. You know, she's got a book coming out. So be on the lookout for that as well. Make sure you guys are following her on social media. Shout out to my brother Jimmy Nelson on that camera. Make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. You know, till next time, stay tuned. Stay blessed, stay healthy, just give me five, y'all.